Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are interested in this binary hypothesis testing problem. We have a vector of observations X. The observations are complex valued and are n-dimensional. Under hypothesis H is zero, vector X is complex, circularly symmetric Gaussian. The expected value of X given H is zero is this vector mu zero. And the covariance matrix under H is zero is the matrix R. Recall that covariance matrices are Hermitian and positive semi-definite. This means that R Hermitian is equal to R. Moreover, if we have a vector in the n-dimensional complex space Z, so Z is in CN, Z Hermitian or Z is greater than or equal to zero for every Z. Under H1, the mean vector is mu1, and this is the difference between hypothesis H0 and hypothesis H1. The covariance matrix under H1 is the same matrix R. The two hypotheses are equally probable. The prior probability of H0 is one half. The prior probability of H1 is one half. Typically, we are interested in minimizing the average probability of error. The average probability of error is defined as probability of H0, that's the prior probability that H0 is the true hypothesis, times the probability that we decide H1 given that the true hypothesis is H0. This is an error event. The truth is H0, but we make an error and decide in favor of H1. Then we have another term related to the second error, which is to decide H0 while the true hypothesis is H1. We need to multiply this probability by the prior probability that the true hypothesis is H1. This is the average probability of error. And to minimize the average probability of error, we use the MAP rule, maximum a posteriori. We compare the posterior probability of hypothesis H1 given X against the posterior probability of hypothesis H0 given X. If this is greater, we make a decision in favor of H1. Otherwise, we decide in favor of H0. By Bayes' theorem, we can rewrite the posterior probability, let's say this one, as the prior probability of H1 times the likelihood function divided by f of x. And we can do the same here. Of course, the assumption is that f of x is non-zero. In our case, the two hypotheses are equiprobable. Then this can go with that, and these two terms can be eliminated. In our case, the MAP rule is the maximum likelihood rule, ML. In other words, to implement the MAP rule, we need to compare the likelihood functions. We compute the likelihood of x given h1, the likelihood of x given h0. If this is greater, we decide h1, otherwise we decide h0. We know the likelihood functions because x is complex valued, circularly symmetric Gaussian, with given means and covariance matrix. So we can use the expression of the multivariate complex valued circularly symmetric Gaussian distribution. The two likelihoods share the same covariance matrix, but they differ in the expected value of x. The expected value of x is vector mu0 under h0 and is mu1 under h1. To reduce the amount of computations needed to make a decision, we need to put our decision in the simplest form. In other words, we do not really need to compute this quantity. Note that this factor here is the same factor there. We can just divide both sides by this positive quantity. Then we have exponential. Well, we can apply logarithm, which is strictly increasing to both sides. In this case, we just need to compare the quadratic forms. We can expand the quadratic forms. And we note that there is a term that is quadratic in vector x, but the same term appears on both sides. So it can be eliminated. We are left with six terms. We can take these guys, join them to the left-hand side. This is the quantity that we will compute in order to make a decision. These two terms can be combined as mu1 minus mu0, Hermitian R inverse x. And these two terms can be combined as x Hermitian R inverse, then we have mu1 minus mu0. Note that each one of those guys is a scalar, and they are the complex conjugates of each other. Note that this is a scalar quantity. If we take the Hermitian of this scalar quantity, Hermitian means transposition and complex conjugation. Now, this is a scalar. When we transpose it, we just get the same scalar. So if we take the Hermitian of a quantity here that is a scalar, this is the complex conjugate. If we take Hermitian, which is the complex conjugate, we will get mu1 minus mu0 Hermitian, R inverse Hermitian. But recall that R is a covariance matrix of a random vector, and so it is Hermitian. So R inverse Hermitian is simply R inverse, and then we get X, which is this one here. These two guys are the complex conjugates of each other, and so their sum is real valued. Their sum is double the real valued of this term here. Then we have two extra terms that do not depend on the vector of observations vector x. Each one of those terms is real valued. If we take the complex conjugate of this term, and because this term is a scalar, this is equivalent to taking the Hermitian. 
and the Hermitian is mu zero Hermitian starting from here, then R inverse Hermitian, which is R inverse, then mu zero Hermitian Hermitian, which is mu zero, the same guy here. A complex quantity with a conjugate that is equal to itself is real valued, and the same regarding this term. In other words, this quantity that we compute, we give it a name, which is T. T is called the decision or test statistic. This is a function of the observations that we need to use once we get our vector of observations or measurements, and then we compute. We compare, in our case here, with zero. If we get t greater than zero, we decide h1. Otherwise, we decide h0. Note that if this term here is called z, then this is z conjugate, and then we have these two terms. t is revalued, as we have seen, and because t is an affine transformation of Gaussian vector x, t is Gaussian. Thus, the decision statistic or the test statistic is a real valued Gaussian. Now, what is the probability of error? The probability of error is the probability that t is greater than zero. If t is greater than zero, we make a decision in favor of h1. This is an error if the true hypothesis is h0. So we take this probability multiplied by the prior probability of h0, which is one half in our case. Another possible error is that t is less than zero we make a decision in favor of H0. This is erroneous if the true hypothesis is H1. And then we take this probability multiplied by the prior probability of H1, which is one half. The average probability of error is one half times the probability that T is greater than zero given H0, plus one half times the probability that T is less than zero given H1. Let's focus now on computing this probability. We can check that in our case, these two probabilities are actually equal. So we will focus on one of them. Now, to compute this probability, we know that T is real valued Gaussian. To characterize big T, the decision statistic, we need its mean value and we need its variance. What is the expected value of T given H0? So we take the expectation of this quantity given H0. The expectation is mu1 minus mu0, Hermitian or inverse, the expectation of X given H0. And this thing is mu0. Then also we need to add the expectation of this quantity given H0. This will be mu zero Hermitian or inverse mu one minus mu zero. And then these two guys do not depend on the observations. So we just add them like this. We have four terms and these four terms can be combined in this quadratic form. The expected value of the decision statistic given H zero is the quadratic form involving the inverse of the covariance matrix. And it involves the vector mu one minus mu zero. So we put it here and we put its Hermitian here. And then we have a minus sign. We also need to compute the conditional variance of T given H0. Note that T, it has Z plus Z conjugate. So before computing the variance of T, let's study the following lemma. If we have a random variable, a complex valued random variable Z, that is proper. So proper is a general name for circularly symmetric. Then the variance of alpha Z plus beta Z conjugate, alpha and beta are just constant complex numbers. The variance of this quantity here is the magnitude squared of alpha plus the magnitude squared of beta times the variance of z. Let the expectation of z be mu. What is the variance of this quantity? We need to subtract the mean. The mean is alpha times mu. And if the expectation of z is mu, then the expectation of z conjugate is mu conjugate. So the mean value of this is alpha mu plus beta mu conjugate. We take this, we take the magnitude squared, and then we take expectation. So the variance of this quantity is that we take this quantity minus the mean value. We have alpha Z minus mu plus beta Z conjugate minus mu conjugate. And then we need to take the magnitude squared, which is equivalent to taking this complex quantity and then multiplying it by its complex conjugate. We get four terms. We get the magnitude of alpha squared, and then we get the expectation of Z minus its mean value times Z conjugate minus its mean value. This is the expectation of the magnitude squared of Z minus its mean value. That's the variance of Z. If we multiply this by this, we have beta squared. And again, we have the variance of Z. These are the two terms here. Then we have two more terms. If we multiply this by that, we get alpha beta conjugate and then the expectation of Z minus mu squared. And then we have alpha conjugate beta. And this is the expectation of Z minus mu squared. And then we need to take the conjugate. This is the general variance for a general complex valued random variable Z. But if Z is proper, by definition, a random variable Z is proper 
if the expectation of z minus its mean value, which is mu, and then we take the square, if this expectation is exactly zero, then we say that z is proper. This quantity here is sometimes given the name pseudo variance or pseudo covariance in the case of random vectors. Because z is proper, then this expectation is equal to zero. And then the variance of z times the constant alpha plus z conjugate times the constant beta is simply the variance of z times the magnitude squared of alpha plus the magnitude squared of beta. In our problem, the decision statistic t is z, which is given by this quantity here, plus z conjugate. In our case, alpha is one and beta is one. And note that the other two terms in t, those two terms are constants that do not depend on the random variable x, and hence they are irrelevant in the computation of the variance. Our focus is z plus z conjugate. The variance of t given h zero is one plus one, that's two variance of z. But this is if z is proper. Is z proper? Let's check this. So let's study the expectation of z minus its mean value given h zero squared. And if this is zero, then z is indeed proper, and we can apply our result here. So the expectation of mu one minus mu zero Hermitian are inverse. Then we have x. We should subtract the mean given h zero, which is mu zero, and then we need to square this. We have a scalar squared. Let's call it s. I can write it as s s transpose. The transpose of a scalar is itself. By doing this, I can take this square and write it as mu one minus mu zero Hermitian r inverse x minus mu zero. And then I go back here and take transpose x minus mu zero transpose. Here it is. And then we have r inverse transpose, and we leave it like this because r is not a symmetric matrix, generally speaking. It is Hermitian. r inverse Hermitian is r inverse. Then we take the transpose of this vector, which is Hermitian. So this will leave us with mu one minus mu zero conjugate. We apply the expectation. Where are our random variables? They are living in this vector and that vector. We can take these terms outside the expectation, and then we have this expectation here. And what is this expectation? This expectation is the pseudo covariance matrix of vector x. Vector x, as the problem states, is circularly symmetric. It is proper. And so its covariance matrix is the all zero matrix. Hence, this quantity here is exactly equal to zero. Indeed, the complex valued random variable z is proper. And so t is equal to z plus z conjugate plus a constant. And the variance of t is two times the variance of z. The variance of z, we do something like here. But in the computation of the variance, we use magnitude squared. We need the magnitude squared of this quantity. We multiply this quantity not by itself, but by its complex conjugate. So we take the quantity here, that's z after subtracting the mean, given h0, and then we multiply by the complex conjugate. And because this is a scalar quantity, we multiply by the Hermitian. And the Hermitian is x minus mu0 Hermitian, r inverse Hermitian, that's r inverse, and then mu1 minus mu0. The terms containing our random vector, this one and that one, when we apply expectation, this is the covariance matrix of vector x. And in our problem, the covariance matrix is exactly the same under h0 and under h1. This expectation is r, and so we have r inverse, r, r inverse. This is equal to r inverse, and this is the variance of z plus z conjugate given h0. And also given h1. Again, it is in our specific problem, it happens that the variance will not depend on the hypothesis because the two likelihood functions have the same covariance matrix. That's the average probability of error. Again, it can be checked that this probability is the same as that probability. And so the average probability of error is just this probability here. Now we know everything about t. t is real valued Gaussian, and we know the mean. The mean is minus mu1 minus mu0. Hermitian r inverse mu1 minus mu0. That's the mean value. And what is the variance? The variance is this quantity here. The probability of error is the probability that the test statistic or decision statistic exceeds zero given h0. This is the Gaussian distribution with this mean and that variance, and we want to investigate the probability that it exceeds zero. This probability is the q function, zero minus the mean value. So this will give us this quadratic form, and then we divide by the standard deviation, which is the square root of this quantity here. The average probability of error in our case is the q function, the square root of one half mu one minus mu zero Hermitian or inverse mu one minus mu z. As a special case, what if the matrix R is equal to sigma squared times identity? In this case, the average probability of error is the q function, and then we have one half, and then mu one minus mu zero Hermitian. The inverse of R is one over sigma squared. I can put sigma squared here, and then we have identity times mu one minus mu zero. 
this quadratic form is simply mu1 minus mu0 Hermitian times mu1 minus mu0. And this is the L2 norm squared of mu1 minus mu0. And here we have a factor 1 over 2 sigma squared. Note that in this special case, our average probability of error depends on the Euclidean distance between mu0 and mu1. This is the mean vector under H0, and that is the mean vector under H1. The average probability of error depends on this. If we denote this by D for distance, this is Q of D squared over 2 sigma squared. 